In this lesson, I will discuss exponential functions. An exponential function is a function of this form. You have a constant c, where c is non-zero, times a number raised to x. Now, this is the first time wherein you will encounter your x as an exponent. So that is why it's called an exponential function. Some remarks about your base a here. It should not be equal to 1, and it has to be positive. Let us consider the graph of y equals 2 to the x. In this case, our base a is greater than 1. Notice that as x becomes bigger and bigger, 2 to the x becomes bigger and bigger as well. We have 2, 4, 8, and if it's 10, it's already 1,000. 24. So as you can see, your graph increases fast. However, if x becomes more and more negative, just like in this case, the value of 2 to the x gets closer and closer to 0. So that's why your graph would approach the x-axis, y equals 0. It will have a horizontal asymptote there. What about if a is between 0 and 1? So as an example, let us consider y equals 1 half raised to x. As x becomes bigger and bigger, notice that 1 half raised to x becomes closer and closer to 0. So that's why it will have a horizontal asymptote also at y equals 0. And as x becomes more and more negative, the value of 1 half raised to x becomes bigger and bigger. It becomes more and more positive. So that's why the direction will go that way. If you compare the graphs of y equals 2x and y equals 1 half raised to x, observe that they are just reflections of each other along the y-axis. Why is that? If your y equals 2 to the x, this is your f of x. Notice that f of negative x is equal to 2 to the negative x. And 2 to the negative x can be written as 2 to the negative 1 raised to x. 2 to the negative 1 is 1 half raised to x. And let us recall that if you have f of x and f of negative x, what happens there? f of negative x is obtained from f of x by reflecting the graph of y equals f of x along the y-axis. Here are some properties of the function y equals a to the x. Notice that the only difference between these two is that if a is greater than 1, the exponential function is increasing, whereas if a is between 0 and 1, it is increasing. But for the rest of these properties, it's all the same. Their domain is just a set of real numbers. This curve extends, so that's why your domain is a set of real numbers. The set of all possible y-coordinates is the open interval 0 to infinity. Your y-coordinates can only be positive numbers. It cannot be equal to 0 because you have a horizontal asymptote there. Both of them, they do not intersect the x-axis, of course, because the x-axis is your horizontal asymptote. So that's why they do not have an x-intercept. For their y-intercept, their y-intercepts are both equal to y equals 1. This is true because regardless of the value of a, if you have y equals a to the x, when you're solving for the y-intercept, you set x to 0. And when x is 0, that is equal to 1. For both of them, the horizontal asymptote is the y-axis. They do not have vertical asymptotes. And they contain these three points. Negative 1, 1 over a, 0, 1, and 1 over a. So these three points are very useful whenever you're trying to sketch the graph of your function. Remember this. Notice also the steepness of your exponential function. If a is greater than 1, the bigger your a is, the steeper your exponential function is. Whereas if a is between 0 and 1, the smaller is your base. Look at this. 1 6 is smaller than 1 3rd, then the steeper the graph is. 
For instance, we want to sketch the graph of g of x equals 2 to the x minus 3. Note that we can get the graph of 2 to the x minus 3 from the graph of y equals 2 to the x. What is just the difference between the two? We just have to shift the graph 3 units downwards. Let us graph y equals 2 to the x. Recall that you have the points 0, 1. 1, 2, and negative 1, 1 half. Recall that y equals a to the x will contain the points negative 1, 1 over a, 0, 1, and 1, a. So I have the points 0, 1, 1, 2, and negative 1, 1 half. So the graph will look something like that. And now we will just shift everything 3 units downward. So the point zero, 1 will now go to 0, negative 2. This one will go to negative 1. And this one will go to this point. Note that for y equals 2x, you have a horizontal asymptote of y equals 0. And therefore, when you bring everything down, the horizontal asymptote will also move. You will now have a horizontal asymptote of y equals negative 3. Our graph will look something like this. The green one is y equals 2 to the x minus 3. Let us analyze the graph of y equals 2 to the x minus 3. The domain is, of course, the set of real numbers. What is the range? The range is from negative 3 open up to positive infinity. The intercepts. For the x-intercept, you set y equals 0. However, at this time, we still cannot solve this one. We would need logarithmic equations. We will be able to answer that. But for now, we just know that we have an x-intercept. For your y-intercept, when x equals 0, your y is 2 to the 0 minus 3. So that's 1 minus 3, negative 2. Of course, we're correct. Your y-intercept here is negative 2. Your horizontal asymptote is y equals negative 3. And for vertical asymptote, you have none. The blue graph here is y equals 2 to the x minus 3. And the red graph is y equals 2 raised to x. Next, I want to sketch the graph of y equals 2 to the x plus 3. How is this related with y equals 2 to the x? This red graph over here is y equals 2 to the x already. 2 to the x plus 3 is just the graph of y equals 2 to the x, but shift it 3 units to the left. Because if f of x is 2 to the x, your 2 to the x plus 3 is f of x plus 3. So let us get some points here. Of course, we have the points here. I will get these points. 2, 4, 1, 2, and of course, 0, 1. I will shift everything 3 units to the left. So this one will go to negative 3, 1. This one will become negative 2. And then here, it's 2. It will become negative 1. and that one. What would be some of the properties? Of course, our domain is always a set of real numbers. Remember that for exponential functions, the domain is always a set of real numbers. You have no restrictions. For our range, you just shifted everything to the left. So the horizontal asymptote does not change and therefore the range is still 0 to infinity. 
you have no x-intercept because you just move everything to the left. What about your y-intercept? Well, from this graph, we did not cross it, but we can solve for it. You set x to 0. You have 2 raised to 0 plus 3. So that's 8. And of course, your horizontal asymptote is still y equals 0. The only way that the horizontal asymptote will move is if you move your graph up or down. So here are the two graphs. The red one is y equals 2 to the x and this one here is your 2 to the x plus 3. What if we now have a combination? We want 2 raised to negative x minus 2 minus 1. So what I will do is I will write 2 to the negative x minus 2 first as 2 raised to negative of x plus 2 minus 1. And the reason why I wanted to have that is because this is 2 raised to negative 1, x plus 2 minus 1. And this is 1 half raised to x plus 2 minus 1. So now instead of looking at 2 to the x, I will now look at y equals 1 half raised to x. So how can we achieve this from y equals 1 half raised to x? So if you will start with y equals 1 half raised to x, we can view that as going from 1 half raised to x and then you will change it to x plus 2. Meaning to say if you started with f of x, this is now your f of x plus 2 and then you will subtract 1. Therefore, what transformations will happen? Since you have f of x plus 2, what will happen there? You will move 2 units to the left because this is plus. So I will keep track of those changes here. Move 2 units to the left. And second, from here to here, what happened? You subtracted 1, so therefore you move 1 unit down. Let me first start with y equals 1 half x. I have 1, 1 half. And negative 1, 2. And the graph is decreasing. This is the graph of y equals 1 half raised to x. So to graph, I will move, I will do all of these transformations for the points. First, for this point, move 2 units to the left. So negative 1 will go to 1. And then 1 unit down. So from 1 half, I will now go to negative 1 half. So remember what happened there? 2 units to the left. One unit down. So this is my point. Next. For this point over here, two units to the left. So you're now at negative two and then one unit down. So this point. And lastly, two units to the left and one unit down. Since we move down, the horizontal asymptote will also change. The original horizontal asymptote at x-axis at y equals 0 will now go to let's say this is y equals negative 1. So therefore your graph is this one. And you have a horizontal asymptote. This is the graph. The red graph is y equals 2 to the negative x or 1 half raised to x. And this is the function that we are looking for. Again, let's look at some of the properties. The domain is, again, the set of all reals. What can you now say about the range? Since you moved one unit downwards, the range is now negative 1, 2, 
positive infinity. For your intercepts, your x-intercept is negative 2. So we obtained that point earlier. For your y-intercept, we were not able to get a point for that earlier. So you can just solve for it from your equation. Set x to 0. You get that y is 2 raised to negative 2 minus 1. This is equal to 1 fourth minus 1, which is equal to negative 3 fourths. Of course, your horizontal asymptote is the line y equals negative 1. Next, we want to sketch the graph of g of x equals 3 times 1 half raised to x. Again, I will just start with the graph of 1 half x. What is the only transformation here? You just have a vertical stretching. What do I mean by vertical stretching? All the y values gets multiplied by 3. So for y equals 1 half x, you have points 0, 1, negative 1, 2, and 1, 1 half. This is y equals 1 half raised to x. But for g of x, we multiply all the y values by 3. So for this one, the y coordinate is 2. It will now go to 6. 1 times 3 will now go to 3. And this 1 half times 3 will now go to 3 halves or 1 and 1 half. And your graph is now this one. What will happen to your horizontal asymptote? The horizontal asymptote is still the x-axis because remember, you're just stretching your graph. You did not move up or down. So the properties would be the main is still the set of all real numbers. The range is still 0 to infinity. You have no x-intercept. Your y-intercept got multiplied by 3, so that's y equals 3, and your horizontal asymptote is still y equals 0. And this is the graph. Now, suppose that instead of 3 times 1 half raised to x, I now have negative 3 raised to 1 half x. Since the constant that was multiplied to 1 half raised to x is negative 3, this means that all y values gets multiplied by negative 3. So here are my 3 points. This is the graph of y equals 1 half raised to x. And I obtained the 3 points. Negative 1, 2, 0, 1, and 1. 1, 1 half. We just multiply all the y coordinates by negative 3. So this one, 2 multiplied by negative 3 will now go to negative 6. 1 will go to negative 3. And 1 half times negative 3 is negative 3 halves. So that's negative 1 and 1 half. This one. Here are my three points. My horizontal asymptote is still the x-axis because I did not move up and down. This is now the graph of y equals negative 3 times 1 half raised to x. Let us analyze it. The domain again is still the set of all reals. What about the range? The range is negative infinity up to 0, right? Because you have a flipping along the x-axis because the constant here is negative. You have no x-intercept. Your y-intercept is negative 3. Your horizontal asymptote, it's still the x-axis or y equals 0. This is the graph. Now, before we proceed with our next example, let me just define the number e. 
The number e is defined as the number that the expression 1 plus 1 over n raised to n approaches as n becomes bigger and bigger. So I have here a table. So as you notice, n here becomes bigger and bigger and the value of 1 plus 1 over n raised to n approaches this number. So the number e is just an irrational number, just like pi. And it is approximately equal to 2.7182. You can just think of E as this. Now notice, of course, that E is greater than 1. So therefore, how will the graph of Y equals E to the X look like? E is greater than 1, so therefore, it's increasing. Suppose I want to sketch the graph of negative E raised to X minus 3. This red graph over here is the graph of y equals e to the x. It is just an increasing function. How will you obtain negative of e to the x minus 3? What will you do first? First, you have to pass through e to the x minus 3 first. And then, you now multiply the whole thing by a negative number. And therefore, what will now be the transformation from here to here? The x got changed. From x, it became x minus 3. So therefore, you move 3 units to the right. From here to here, you multiply it by negative 1. So what will happen? It will be flipped along the x-axis. Or you can think of it as multiplying all the y-coordinates by negative 1. Just like what we did in the previous example, I will do these transformations. First, 3 units to the right. So for this one, x coordinate is 1. It will now go to 4. That's a marker there. But you will flip it along the x axis. So this is e. It will now go to negative e. So this point will go somewhere here. But the x coordinate is still equal to 4. For this point over here, 3 units to the right. So 0, it will now go to 3. But then flip along the x axis. So the y coordinate of 1 will now become negative 1. And lastly, this one, 3 units to the right, x coordinate of negative 1 will go to 2. And flip along the x axis, you will now go to. 1 over e, somewhere here probably, negative 1 over e, there you go. And the graph is this one. This is now our graph, negative e raised to x minus 3. Let us analyze this. The domain is the set of all reals. The range is? Negative infinity to 0. The horizontal asymptote is still y equals 0. It did not change because we do not have shifting upwards or downwards. We do not have any x-intercept. What about the y-intercept? For the y-intercept, you just set x to 0. So that's negative e to the negative 3 or negative 1 over e cubed. So that is the exact value of your y-intercept.